Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, we are coming to you from our central Washington location. It is Sunday, April 2nd, and as you can see, global warming is alive and well in Washington State. But what I need to talk to you about is yesterday was April 1st, which means we were exactly halfway through the 120-day amnesty registration period for those of us who went to bed one night with a firearm with an attached stabilizing brace only to wake up the next morning to find out that we were proud owners of an NFA-regulated short barrel rifle. Well, now that we are halfway through that registration period, maybe we ought to re-examine what the right move for us is now or what the right move might be for us in the near future. So today, Let's spend a few very important minutes and talk about halfway through the amnesty period, what is our next move? Okay, so like I said, the issue we're talking about today is the pistol brace rule. As we know, the rule was published on January 31st, which gives us until May 31st to get all of our firearms, which at one time we called AR pistols, now called short barrel rifles, to be registered with the federal government. Now, yesterday was April 1st, which means we were exactly 60 days through that 120-day period. Now, for those of you who I've had the pleasure of having private conversations with about what is our next best move, you will know that my personal opinion has been I'm not doing anything for the first 60 days. And I was not going to do anything for the first 60 days because I wanted to see how the lawsuits on this thing shook out. I wanted to see whether or not this rule really, really had an opportunity to go into full effect. And I think many of us were concerned that, God, it would be awful to give the ATF a bunch of information about firearms of mine, only to find out later on that I didn't, in fact, need to give them that information. Well, now we are 60 days in and we need to do a reassessment. Now, for those of you who've been geeking out on this channel, you know that we have covered not one, not two, not three, but four separate lawsuits on this case. Okay, we did this video right here, and that was about the very first lawsuit against ATF's pistol brace rule, a case called Mock v. Garland. We have also done lawsuits about Texas versus ATF, Brito versus ATF, as well as the Firearms Responsibility and Accountability Coalition v. Garland. Now, of all of those lawsuits, there are two in particular that I am paying very careful attention to. And for that reason, on day 60, I have at least three firearms that would fall under the purview of this rule. At day 60, my choice right now is I'm not doing anything yet. I'm probably going to wait until at least day 90 now because I want to see how some of these lawsuits shake out. Now, there are two suits, like I mentioned, that I think we should pay very careful attention to. I think these two suits have a lot of teeth to them. The first suit is the suit of Firearms Responsibility and Accountability Coalition v. Garland. That is a suit that is filed in the U.S. District Court for North Dakota. What I like about this suit, however, is there is 26 attorney generals. That means more than half of the states in the United States has sued the ATF over this particular rulemaking process. So that is a lawsuit that I really think we need to be pay careful attention to. The other lawsuit is the one that we most recently have covered, and that is the suit of Texas versus ATF. Now, this has the Gun Owners of America and a lot of other named plaintiffs in there, but that lawsuit is moving for a nationwide temporary injunction and then ultimately if litigated for a permanent injunction of this rulemaking process. So these are two suits. If either one of them starts picking up steam and starts getting the remedies that they're asking for, this rule will cease to exist or the enforcement of this rule will in fact stop. It is for that reason and that reason only that we are choosing to wait now until day 90. Now, listen, I have talked to a lot of you all around the country. I get that some of you decided to get out in front of the curve. Some of you decided to throw your firearms into that Amnesty One hopper right away. And some of you have already received approved Amnesty Form Ones. Congratulations. For the rest of us that are still trying to decide what we want to do, as I say, I am never going to tell any of you how to think, but I do want to give you all of the stuff to think about. And for that reason, 
at the current time, we here at Washington Gun Law are probably going to wait until day 90. Listen, you may have more questions about the pistol brace rule or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. If you do, you should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now. But if you don't, hey, all of that information is right there in the description box. In the meantime, I want all of you to remember that part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.